We need to be fading Kirk Cousins. Okay. This is, there are lots of reasons to fade Kirk Cousins. One of those reasons is it's a primetime game. Kirk Cousins, not usually very good in primetime games, but <laughs> that's more narrative driven. It's that the pass grade differential for Minnesota against Philadelphia is the second worst, is the second worst among all matchups. Negative 38% per PFF. Negative 38% in the pass grade. The rush grade should be okay for Minnesota. Alexander Madison is an okay start, but the passing game is going to be in a lot of trouble. So once again, if Jordan Addison is the second or third receiver on this team, like Justin Jefferson is going to get his, but it's going to be hard to see spike weeks for the ancillary pass catching pieces of the Minnesota Vikings. Even looking at the tight end matchups, TJ Hawkinson is probably going to be okay. 22% targets per route, which is what Darren Waller was doing. But we'll see whether TJ Hawkinson gets a little bit more attention from this Philadelphia offense, given the inexperience that Jordan Addison has and the inconsistencies that KJ Osborne has. I wonder if TJ Hawkinson gets collapsed on a little bit more. And if that's the case, maybe this is more of a TJ Hawkinson game that Kirk Cousins just continues to dump off. Hawkinson already got eight, tar eight receptions, nine targets in week one. So it would not surprise me then if, if TJ Hawkinson is the one to reap the benefits. It's going to be like a Kirk Cousins seven for 70 game for Hawkinson. And Jefferson gets his 100 yards and Addison gets like, four or five for 50. That's not going to get it done for you from a fancy perspective. So I think we're fading Kirk cousins. We are fading Jordan Addison. We are tempering expectations for Deandre Swift. And we are a little bullish relative to market on TJ Hawkins. And I think Hawkinson will be just fine.